Well, good evening, Agape. It's so good to have you join us again virtually for the Word on Wednesday. I am just uh, overly blessed for what God has been doing, not just in my life, but also in your life. And so uh, I believe that the Word on Wednesday uh, is something that will encourage you and strengthen you to keep you moving forward so that the devil will not play with your mind and, and make you believe, get you to believe that God doesn't love you, that God doesn't have a great plan for your life. Let's pray. Eternal God, we're thankful for this time of teaching and sharing of the word. We thank you for those who have joined us virtually. We pray now that their hearts are open to receive what you have prepared for them in order for them to be, understand the blessings from you. Thank you, God. We praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, beloved, I want to uh, start on uh, a new study for the next uh, two to three weeks. And I, I just believe that this study will be a blessing for you. I want to uh, move over uh, to this book, uh, Psalms 1, um, verses 1 chapter one, verses uh, one through six, which is the entire Psalm. Psalm one, beginning verses one through six. And let, let me read this uh, for you from the New King James Version. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly should not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Shall perish. I want to uh, be able to look at this and get you to look at this as we uh, jump into this. Uh, and really, I, I really want to kind of uh, look at it from this 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 uh, viewpoint. Uh, we're going to talk about the two different uh, uh, ways of life. Uh, the one thing I, I, I like about the psalm, and I want you to understand about the complete psalm, no matter where you are as a Christian or where you are in your Christian life, whether you're up or down, soaring or struggling, there is a psalm that speaks directly to the spiritual state of your heart. That's, that's the wonderful thing about uh, the psalm, uh, all the psalms. Uh, there is something that will speak to your spiritual state, the current state that you're in. There's something in one of these psalms, all the entire psalms. There is something that will speak to your spiritual state directly. So, so if you begin to study the Psalms, read the Psalms, you'll find there's something in there that will hit you where you currently are. And so that's the most, uh, one of the most enjoyable things I love about the Psalms. There's something in there that will hit you where you are, no matter what uh, state you're in. Again, whether you're up or down, struggling or soaring, uh, no matter what you're experiencing, there's a Psalm that will help you. So here, here's where I want to go to this, uh, this evening. I want to uh, kind of break it up and look at it from this way. Two roads of life. Two roads of life. Let me ask this question. Which road are you taking or have you taken as a Christian? In fact, the, the, the whole life is really, when you look at life, uh, you can look at it as two roads. Which way are you going? going left or you're going right? You're going forward or you're going backwards? Uh, which road in, in life have you taken first? Which means, where are you? And, and I look at my own life. 
uh, there was two roads in the beginning of my walk before I even became Christian. I could go right, I go left, I could go the right way or the wrong way based upon what I believe about God. And and all of us really uh, have to say at least we, we took one road, which was I left where I was and I found a new way of living, a new walk, a new road I took, which is the road of Christ. And I became a Christian. That, that's a road. You, you made a choice. And, and so life, life is all about making choices. And then it's making the right choice, the correct choice. And, and so I, I would I would ask you, what, what road in life are you taking? And then, check this out, which road have you taken since you've been a Christian? Which road have you taken since you've been a Christian? Because I think as we look into this psalm, uh, we may profess to be a Christian, but we're not taking the right road as a Christian. See, Psalm 1, what Psalm 1 does, it differentiates between these two paths of life. One road leads to blessings or a blessing, the other to cursing one, one to salvation, and the other to destruction. So, so look, this is what this Psalm, it gives us two paths of life. One road leads to blessings or to blessings, the other to cursing. One to salvation and the other to destruction. Two roads leading to two different directions. That's the key. That's the key. Maybe, maybe as you as you as you ponder on that thought right there at this time, maybe you know some folks that are that keep taking, keeps taking the road to destruction. And that's the amazing thing when you look at it. Uh, you can be in church. You can be a part of the fellowship and still be going down the road to destruction. You, you can raise your hands up and praise God and, and shed some tears and maybe even speak in tongue or do something, but still be going down the wrong road. So, so it's, it's about which road are you taking? Which road do you, are you taking? Because that's the key to dealing with life. It's about making the right choice, going down the correct road. And so in this psalm tonight, we're going to begin with verse 1 and look at verse 1 tonight. And then uh, in the coming weeks or two, we're going to continue and, and just look at this. And, and I believe that as we break it down you'll be, be able to see some things that will be a blessing to your life. And then it may help you make sure you're moving down the correct road. And if you're not, then it can give you the choice of turning around and going down the correct road. That's the good thing about the, your choice. You can be going down the wrong road and all of a sudden come to the point of saying, I've got to change my way. And that's what we all have done when we came to Christ. We said, I've been going down the wrong road, and now I've got to change. I've got to make a change. But the change doesn't stop just because you became a Christian or you accepted Christ. It's by continually making the right choice, going down the correct road. And sometimes, beloved, it's hard choices you have to make. There's some hard choices. It sounds easy, it sounds simple, but the going down the right road sometimes uh, takes some hard, some hard lessons to learn and takes some uh, stability in your mind and your life to say, this is the road I'm going to take no matter what, no matter what I'm going to experience. So let, let's jump into that tonight. What, what two roads? The, Look at the two roads of life. And so as we begin at verse one, what a godly person does not practice. That, that's, 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 that's where we're starting. It's about what a godly person does not practice. What are you practicing maybe? then maybe you shouldn't be practicing. What, what, what is it that, that you, 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 what are you practicing that maybe is not in alignment 
with God's plan and God's will and God's way. Think about it. what are you practicing as a Christian? That that's that's a that's a provoking thought. What are you practicing? So, so let, let's get them because we just said uh, uh, some things godly people do not practice. So let's look. Let's look. Beginning with verse one. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So let's, let's, look. let's, let's look at this. Let's break this down. Blessed is the man. Let's, let's look at let's Go back and look. Blessed. Here, I want to look at some words tonight. Blessed. When we hear that word blessed, blessed or blessed, it is not deserved, but is a gift from God. Not dependent on our circumstances, but upon the vitality of our relationship with God. So, so look, he said, blessed is the man. So, so what, what we're looking at is first, he says, I'm blessed, but it's not something that I've earned. It's not something that I deserve. It is not something that I, I can go buy. Look at what it says. He says, blessed is not deserved, but it is a gift from God. Okay. Blessed is not deserved. When you're blessed, when, when, when someone says you're blessed and, or when you say God is blessing me, it's not something that you, you've earned, something you deserve. It's a gift from God. And I tell you this, if we were to earn it, none of us would, could earn it because we keep call, falling short. We keep having sin in our life. Sin becomes a part of our life. But look what it says. Look what he says when I want you to understand this thing called blessed. It says, not deserved, but is a gift from God, not dependent on our circumstances. So let me go back to the old church when I was growing up. The more money you give does not constitute you're going to be blessed more or be blessed at all. Let me say this. Some people have in their minds that the more I do, then the more blessings I'm going to get. The more I stay around, the more I commit to do this, God is going to bless me a whole lot more. That is not correct. Look what he says. It is not dependent upon our circumstances. In other words, you may think your life is all great and I got all this, I'm doing all this, God, so I'm going to get blessed versus someone who doesn't have anything or, or struggling. It's not based upon your circumstance. Look what it's based upon. This is the thing that, that blows me away. It said, being blessed, which is not deserved, but is a gift from God, is based upon the vitality of our relationship with God. In other words, how God blesses us on things we don't deserve is based upon the vitality of how alive or how alive, how committed are you in your relationship with God? That's the key. That's the key. How, how committed are you in your relationship? That is the number one thing it's about the vitality of your relationship. How committed are you in your relationship with God? Let me go back. Let's look at it again. It's not dependent upon our circumstances, but upon the vitality of our relationship with God. Let me say one more. Upon the vitality of our relationship with God. If your relationship is jacked up, if your relationship is really not there, is not there's no commitment, then that's why 
you're not being blessed the way you think you ought to be blessed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, have you ever wondered, maybe, or somebody ever wondered some things about you and says, I know your physical situation. I know your economic situation. But how in the world are you able to do what you're doing? Because see, our, our blessings or how we're blessed is not based upon what's in our pocket. It's not based upon what, what we think we have. It's based upon our relationship with God. When your relationship is right, and that excitement is in your relationship because the relationship is not coming from the standpoint of I'm just going through the motions because I want to be blessed. There has to be something in your heart. There has to be that hunger in your heart, that desire in your heart that says I'm in this thing because I love him. And because my relationship is so vital, God blesses me even when I don't deserve it. it, it in, fact, in fact, the relationship with, with Christ is like a relationship uh, a physical relationship with somebody. You can go through the motions and say, I love you, but your actions never show it. You, you can go through the motions, be with somebody and say, I love you, but you don't show it. Because love has love is action. Love is action. And so sometimes... Uh, we, we go through the relationship with God and, and say, I love you, but my actions don't show it. And so what happens then is that we begin to lack simply because we don't really love God the way we say we do. And so our, our, the being blessed or the blessings of your life are not because you deserve it. But it's based, and not based on your circumstances, but it's based upon the vitality of your relationship with God. Now notice, when you love somebody from your heart out, then guess what happens? Things, things begin to happen. Things begin to, to, to transpire for you because of the relationship. So, so the first thing I want to share in that verse is that blessed is the man. Oh, yeah, let me look at it one more time for more. Bless is not deserved, but is a gift from God, not dependent on our circumstances, but upon the vitality of our relationship with God. When your relationship is right with God, when you are in the right relationship for the right reason, with the right actions, that's when God begins to bless. Then you become a blessed person. Everything you, everything you touch turns to gold. Everything you, everything that that you you go after that God is in God's plan, God does it. You do. You go without want. Because why? I'm blessed. When you are blessed. That's when you realize I'm in the right relationship. The vitality of my relationship is right. What I'm going through is not a dead relationship. I'm going through the motions relationship. Because here, check this out. When you go through a, a, a relationship that's dead, you know what it ends up? Divorce. It ends up in divorce. Because why? The vitality of relationship is gone. So I don't want to be divorced from God. I want God. I want to stay hooked up with God because why? When I'm hooked up with him, I'm blessed. Okay, that's the first word I wanted to touch upon. That scripture. He says, blessed. Here, here's the second thing. I want to look at a couple of words as we, as we break this down. He says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of of the ungodly. So look, 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 before we move on. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. There is a separation. Look, when you are walking with God, when you are connected to God, you don't walk with the ungodly. 
and walking with the ungodly. That's what we're going to get into looking at briefly. But but there is a separation. Yes, it is. There is a separation. The text says it. He says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, which we pick it back. If you want to be blessed and you know blessings come from relationship, I'm not walking with the ungodly because I don't want you to mess up what God is doing for me. Okay, look. It says, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So look, there's, there's, we talked about blessed. Now look at the words walk. He says, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Look, those three words are, are, are very good indicators. And look, it indicates one developing into a deeper stronghold of sin. Now we're talking about, remember, what a godly person does not do. Now, if you, he says, nor, he says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. He says, now, look, if you do, it indicates one developing into a deeper stronghold of sin. In other words, there is a downward spiral from walking, standing, and sitting. There's a downward spiral. In other words, if you don't separate, you're going to have a downward spiral. And it's like a plane in the air. You're flying at an altitude. And then all of a sudden you lose cabin pressure, you lose everything, and then you're in a downward spiral. And everyone knows when a plane goes into a downward spiral, the end result is crash. You crash and burn. And normally when a plane goes into a spiral, spiral, it begins to spiral in downward flight, it crashes, there's no one ever left. And that's what sin will do. Sin will mess you up. It will cause you to have a spiral crash and nothing will be left of you. So let's look into this. Let's look into this because I just want to touch on that tonight and get you ready for where God is taking it. Look, he says, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Look, when you walk and what the, what the, what the psalmist is, is referring to, walk refers to the series of steps that the ungodly person takes in life, the decisions they make, and the directions they go in. Let me read it again because we're talking about what the godly person does not practice. But what he talks about is that blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Because when you walk in the counsel of the ungodly, or, this, or you, uh, you take the steps that an ungodly person takes in life, decisions, and directions. In other words, because I'm not going to walk that way, that means the steps that I take, the directions that I decide to go in, uh, the decisions I make are correct. Because when I don't do that, when I do walk in the counsel of the godly, I start making bad decisions. I go in the wrong direction. Everything about my life begins to spiral out of control. That's the first step. So we're talking about, remember, the, the, what the godly person does not practice. And so the, the Psalms is just saying, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. In other words, those who, un who are ungodly really don't make right decisions. You look at their life. Their life is out of kilter. They're out of balance. They're making the wrong decisions. They just, they move on whims. Uh, for excitement, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to 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 do this. And what happens, their decisions are never correct. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. So she says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. I don't walk in that council. I don't listen to it. I don't get their opinion. I don't need their opinion. Because why? Because I know their life is spiraling out of control. Yeah. So let me look at it again before we go. When we, he says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the council of the ungodly. These are things we're talking about what a godly person does not practice. 
See, and the walk here refers to the series of steps that the ungodly person takes in life, decisions, and direction. In other words, why would I listen to someone who's ungodly? Why would I take their opinion? Why would I take, well, you need to go here because I've done it. You're ungodly. You're ungodly. I know the decisions you made in life have been jacked up decisions. They've been messed up decisions. I can look at your life and know your life is not together. Can, let me share this. All that glitter you see is not always gold. And so, so it's about how you're walking, the, the, the decisions you're making, the pathway you're walking. So blessed is a man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. And so that's, that's what, as, as a godly person, that what I'm practicing is not listening to you. I'm not going to walk your way. Here, here's, here's something else I want to share as we look at these words. So first word was walk. He says, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Here's the second part of the, of the word, nor stands in the path of sinners. Here in the text, stand refers to the commitments a person makes to various causes. Stand refers to the commitments a person makes to various causes. In other words, he says, look what it says in the text, nor stands in the path of sinners. I'm, I'm, I'm very aware of what kind of causes or stands the ungodly takes. Look, look at it again. Stand refers to the commitments a person makes to various causes. Now, now the key here is to listen and watch. And you watch ungodly people and you look at what they stand for or the causes. And so as a godly person, since I'm, I'm in the right relationship, I'm refraining from getting caught up in what they're standing for. That's what, look, Stan refers to the commitments a person makes to various causes. And, and so in the church, as a Christian church, as Christian people, as, as we walk in the right way, we make the right, we've got to be careful of the stand and look at the stand that ungodly people take. And, and so what happens is that I think is very, very easy sometimes is that we get caught up in society. We get caught up with flims and whims and, and we, we, we adjust and shift. And really a lot of these things are are ungodly. And so we, we've got to be careful. That's what, see, the godly does not practice standing in the counsel of the ungodly. You got to be careful. I mean, remember now, we're, we're, this plane is flying and it has lost pressure. And now it's a down, remember we say it's a downward spiral. First, first thing is, is about walking. And then now they're talking about standing with them. Say, I, I, I'm walking, and now you walk with people enough, and you'll start standing with them. Okay? So look, so he says, walk, stand. And then what happens when you get so caught up? Sit. He says, look, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. See, it says sit. Sit represents the settled attitudes of the heart or a fixed disposition of a person's heart. Let me read that again. Sit in this text represents the settled attitudes of the heart or a fixed dip, dip, uh, disposition of a person's heart. See, in other words, sinner goes from being wicked, then corrupt internally to being a sinner who practices sin, and finally to being a mocker who scoffs at God and holy things. So look, look, look at the downward spiral. That's why it's so dangerous about your relationship and the decisions and the directions you choose to go. Because when you get connected and, and you sit in the seat of the scornful, look again, what happens? When you start sitting with the seat of the scornful, it represents the settled attitudes of the heart. In other words, you ever watch somebody and, and you look at them and, they, and they're just, just a good person, but all of a sudden 
you begin to watch change. You watch them at one little part, part and they start doing a few things. You, you're hanging around some folk. And then the next thing is you're starting to behave and make and talk like them. And the next thing is you you just your whole attitude has has settled. I, I remember growing up and, and everybody, my parents and grandparents, everybody was talking about don't hang with so and so. Don't hang with certain people. And I didn't understand it then, but then I began to see if you if you start walking with them, what happens? You begin to, you you begin to you know, make some changes, and then you begin to sit when you begin to uh, just just walk, and then you're standing around them, and then the next thing you're sitting with them, you're taking on the whole persona of what you're around, and so you went from this person, and the next thing you totally change. And you're totally like what you've been hanging around with. So that's very important. See, but when you, you got to hang around the right folks. And, and so when you sit with the seat of the scornful, then your heart has been fixed. Your attitudes are, are cemented and you begin to take on the whole persona. Your whole life has changed because your heart has settled for that. So what the Psalms is saying, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the godly, nor standeth, uh, Sin, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits, sits in the seat of the scornful. Look, sits represents the settled attitude of the heart or fixed disposition of a person's heart. And, and that's, that's, that's the key. Well, that's what he begins to talk about here that, that separates us. He said the thing, the godly person, what the godly person practices, because see, if, if you're not, this is the sign of what the ungodly are, who the ungodly are. And I'm here to tell you, there is no life with the ungodly that way. So what, what the psalmist is saying is this is what we're not going to do. Wait, look, look, let's look, look at this. This is what we're not going to do. Sit represents a set of attitude. So this, this, let me break it down this way. He said, blessed man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Well, that's not more. Refuses the secular philosophy. But see, if I'm walking in the counsel of God, they're caught up in secular stuff. They're really caught up in secular stuff. And even from the secular standpoint, they're trying to take the spiritual things and make them secular. Look what it says. Nor stands in the path of sinners. In other words, he res number two says he resists the lure of the crowd to participate in their carnal activities. That's the that's what he's saying. Nor stands in the path of sin. In other words, as as a Christian, and my relationship is vital, the vitality of my relationship with with Christ is right. I'm resisting the lure of the crowd to participate in their carnal activities. In other words, they're saying, "Come on over. It, it's okay. Come on." Come on over. Let's do this. You'll be okay. No, no, no. I'm resisting. No matter how much it looks good or what I think I feel when I do something or or or, or, or how it, it, it appears, I'm resisting the lure to participate in carnal activity. There's that old that old hymn, yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Look what it says. Here's the third thing in in, in verse one nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Here's, here's what it really says. It's when you refuse to associate with those who scoff at God. In other words, there are some folks who will have a facade about themselves, but they really don't care about God. Blasphemers, infidels, atheists, no matter how prosperous they may be, I refuse to associate with them because here's what it has. What I hear grandmama saying now, bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts good behavior. So, so I refuse. I refuse. Let me go back. I refuse to associate with those who scoff at God. A person who scoffs at God is a person who does not respect God, doesn't care about God, does not... Uh, revere God as who he is. They do their own thing because that's what they think life is all about. I refuse to hang around with those folks. 
I refuse to be partners with those kind of folk. I refuse to be to be caught up with them because here, here's what it says. No matter how prosperous they may be, because what happens to many Christians who are on this journey, they look at a physical status and they look at their prosperous and they look at, man, they got it going on. They're doing this. They have this. I want to connect with them. No matter how prosperous they may be, I refuse co to connect with them because here's what I found out. Bad company leads to bad character. It will corrupt good character. Bad company corrupts good character. So this is where I want us to begin. And I just wanted to touch on verse one to get us launched. Uh, blessed is the man that walketh not in the council of the godly, nor stands in the paths of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful. The two roads of life. Which road are you on? We're going to continue with this next week. But it's about understanding uh, this first verse and really examining what road are you taking? What road are you on? And I'm praying, I'm praying that you're on the right road, beloved. And if you're not, I'm praying that you will get on the right, make a turn, make a turn, stop, make a turn. And if, now check this out, if you have caught up and been associated with some folks who scoff at God, stop the car and get off. Stop the car and get out of the car. Say, so I've got to go down this road and I have to go by myself. I'm going by myself, but I don't need a lift. All right, those who are watching, if maybe 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 you've connected with this and you're still trying to to come to to a point of understanding that I've got to make a change in my life. I've got to make a change, and that change is Jesus. And so, I, I want to invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It, it's simple. It's very simple. It's first to admit that you are a sinner, not saved by grace. The second thing is to acknowledge and accept that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Son of God. He died on, our, on the cross for our sins. He is the Messiah. He is the Son of God. I receive that. And then it's simply to invite him to come in. Lord, I am a sinner, not saved by grace. I'm on my way to hell if I die tonight. But I accept and acknowledge that Jesus is your son, that he died on the cross for my sins, that I may have eternal life. And I want to receive him into my life. Lord, will you come into my life tonight? And the Bible says in Revelation that, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, that if any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. He's knocking at the door, and all he is waiting for is an invite. He wants to be invited into your life. Open the door to your heart and say, Lord, come into my life. And I'm here to tell you, he will come in immediately, and he will take up residence in your life. And it doesn't stop there, but it doesn't stop there. It's then we start this journey of growing in grace. It's about the vitality of our relationship there. So won't you come? And those of you who are watching, maybe you've been searching for a church home and you, you want to unite with us. Our, our address is on the screen. All you need to do is contact us. We'll contact you back pray with you, we'll do all the necessary things to bring you into the family of God, the agape, the loving agape family. To those of you who are watching, who are members and friends, thank God for you. I'm praying for you that God will continue to bless you because of your relationship with him. And so next week, we'll move on to verse two. I'm excited. I'm excited about what God is revealing. My wife sends her love. We thank God for you. God, we pray now that your blessings will be upon these people, our people, your people. Thank you for your many blessings. God bless you. God keep you. Hey, be safe. Wear a mask. Be distant. Keep your hands washed. 
And if you can get on the list to get the vaccine, please consider to get the vaccine. God bless you. I'll see you on Sunday morning virtually. God bless you.